Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Christ Church. We trust that your coffee has let your eyes awaken, and now we invite you to stand and sing. Let your hearts awaken as we worship together. Good morning. It's a little cold, but it's not that bad. It's so good to see you here. I'm David Hall, one of the pastors here at Christ Church. What a joy it is to be in worship today. We have a lot of new things happening here at Christ Church this year. You can see some of those in your bulletins this morning. You can see more information if you go to our website, which is Christ Church Chat with two T's dot O-R-G. If you're new to Christ Church and just getting to know us, there's a portal on our webpage called I'm New, and it's got lots of good information about the church. You also can stop at our information desk and pick up an information packet. We've highlighted just a few of the things happening here at the church in an announcement video for you this morning.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 19, verses 105, and then I'll be reading from John, chapter 1. This is Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. In John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And skipping to verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing a couple of songs here in a second. And it is all pointing to Jesus Christ and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. And I don't mean to, when I stand up here and speak, I don't mean to to sound like um, everything in life is going to be great and this Pollyanna kind of attitude. But through Christ, there is a real hope and there is a real power. We see it through scripture. I pray you have seen the power of Christ in your life. Let's stand together across this room. There are so many of you for many different walks of life. There are children in here. There are people with children, there are older adults. Let's stand together and from where you are, let's sing of the power of Christ, the power that is in his name. We're going to sing a song that um, we used to do in here a little bit ago. It's called At Your Name. And I want to just remind you of the chorus or teach you the chorus. Let's sing it together. It sounds like this. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name.
morning in our worship. You know this song so well. What a beautiful name it is. Let's just worship together. Let us hear your voices as we worship together. You are the word at the beginning. One with God.
a powerful name it is. I see you singing. Let's just offer this as our acapella worship to him. What a powerful name. Thank you for worshiping. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your Son. Thank you for a Savior who covers all of our sin, for a Savior who meets us where we are, for a Savior who loves us unconditionally loves us in spite of our sin, loves us in spite of our anger and our hate, our dissension from the power that is your glory. Thank you. And God, let us fall on the name of Jesus. Let us bow before the name of Jesus. Let us humble ourselves and forget our names and forget our families and forget this world for the sake of the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Change us with the name of Jesus. Let us be transformed when we speak that name. Let us recognize the beauty and the wonder and especially the power. For God, we know that through Christ, we can do all things. And God, for those of us who are hurting and are broken, God, for those of us who are alone, for those of us who feel like we cannot hear your voice, remind us of the name of Jesus. Let us in the darkness speak that name. Let us come to you when we are weak. For when we are weak, you are strong. We praise you today and forevermore because you are worthy because you deserve the glory. God, let us get out of the way. Let us surrender all that we have with our lives, with our words, with our jobs, with our relationships, everything. Let us give them back to you and let us boldly claim and proudly speak the name of Jesus. And when we pray, remind us that Jesus taught us to pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Where will you run, my soul? Where will you go when wells run dry? When the wind starts to blow, how you gonna keep this flame alive? In the fading light when night is breaking, I know you will always be waiting. You'll always be there. I'm running to the secret place where you are, where you I sing to you of all the ways you stole my heart, stole my heart. Better is a moment that I spent with you than a million other days away. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running to 
the secret place Ever notice how chaotic life can get? Anybody? Now, sometimes we bring it on ourselves. We, some of us procrastinate. We put off till tomorrow or next week or next month what we could be getting done today. And, and then we run up against deadlines and more work than we can get done in the time we have. Chaos. Sometimes some of us don't really take care of ourselves. We don't eat right. We, we don't get the exercise and rest we need. And, and then at some point, sickness and disease come upon us. But then sometimes it's not about something we've done or something we didn't do. It's just that part of life is chaos that comes at us suddenly appears, sometimes seemingly out of nowhere. We've got a few pictures to show you just to remind you of some scenes of chaos. This first one is, some of you might recognize that, I don't know. Uh, now, some, they 
may have brought that on themselves and some may have just been given to them, but some of you recognize that, right? This next one is uh, some of you will recognize as the battleground for the parent-child relationship. I mean, that's just there. We want to show you this other one so that the next time you're stuck in traffic, maybe you'll remember this picture and you'll say it could be worse. Because I don't think those people are going anywhere for a while. And even in this reflective slide that we're showing today, let's see that again. Uh, There's a couple of scenes there of chaos. You ever notice how children can just kind of produce chaos? There are times I will come up on a family. Sometimes it's an individual parent or maybe both parents. They have children, and the children are producing chaos of some sort. And I will sometimes say to those parents, bless you for the joys and challenges you have. Sometimes the expression is one of appreciation for that, and I just get strange looks sometimes. But. And, and then there's that meeting with the doctor that sometimes produces sudden chaos in our lives. Earlier this week, I was thinking about different scenes of chaos in our lives, and I was reminded of a TV show that I watched quite a bit, and we watched in our house when I was growing up. I Love Lucy was first broadcast in the 1950s. Now, let's be clear, that's before my time. I just want to get that out there. But it was also very popular for decades after that in reruns. And there's a, there's a classic scene in the I Love Lucy series of one of the episodes where uh, Lucy and her friend Ethel have been trying to get, are trying to get on at a chocolate factory. They're trying to get a job there. They've been in several departments already and have um, uh, gotten thrown out of those departments. So this is their last chance to catch on there at the chocolate factory. Let's watch. All right, girls. Now this is your last chance. If one piece of candy gets past you and into the packing room unwrapped, you're fired. Yes, ma'am. Well, this is easier. Yeah, we can handle this, okay? I'm guessing that many of us at some point have probably said what Lucy said there. Ethel, I think we're fighting a losing game. And sometimes it can feel that way. Sometimes chaos shows up quickly and life changes quickly. And while we can laugh at that when it's in a movie or it's in uh, scenes on a TV show, when chaos shows up in our lives, it's not funny. Uh, Whether it's uh, losing a job or it's... um, hearing of the death of somebody close to us or whatever it may be, life can change so very quickly. We can suddenly be put in a state of not knowing what to do next or where to turn next. In our sermon series this month, I'm focusing on the benefits that come with the gift of Jesus Christ in our life and in our world. One of those benefits is that he's the one who can best guide us through all of life. No matter what happens, no matter the chaos that comes our way, through both the scriptures that come from God and the word who is God, 
we have a wonderful life-giving resource to steer us through anything that happens. We speak of the Bible as being the Word of God. Every Sunday when our scripture reader reads the passage for that day, they end by saying the Word of God for the people of God, and we respond to that. But the Bible also tells us at the beginning of the Gospel of John that the Word became flesh and lived with us. In other words, Jesus Christ is the Word of God. The words of the Scriptures are there to point us to the one who is the Word of God. It is through the lens of Jesus that we interpret all of the Scripture, all of the Bible. We understand the Bible. Sometimes I think at the end of our reading in our worship service, we should say the words that point us to Jesus, who is the Word of God. This verse that we heard read earlier from Psalm 119 comes from the longest chapter in all the Bible. Psalm 119 has 176 verses in it. And it's kind of interesting to me that it comes only two chapters after the shortest chapter in the Bible. Psalm 117 has only two verses. But Psalm 119, all 176 verses of that chapter deal with and are focused on the value of the Scriptures. Verse 105 that we heard read is one of those uh, verses I remember from my childhood as I grew up in Sunday school and I grew up in vacation Bible school. It was one of those early verses that we were to memorize and even sang songs about it. And though I learned it in a different translation, the message is still the same. Your word is a lamp on my feet, a light on my path. My focus today is to encourage you to begin or to grow a relationship with Jesus Christ. For too many people who are Christian, too many who began a relationship with Jesus, they do very little to allow that relationship to go deeper, to grow. It's like children, or really any of us at any age, we get a gift for Christmas or our birthday or some other occasion, and we like the gift and we use it for a while, but then we put it in a closet or a cabinet, and we only bring it out every once in a while when we want to play with that gift again. Or it's like getting a gift, and maybe it's a computer or a smartphone, and we only learn a little bit of what, we, what it can do. We only learn a little bit of the benefits We just use it for what we want to use it for, but we don't really learn all the benefits that go with that particular gift. We're all guilty at times and on different levels of just wanting Jesus and the church around to use every once in a while, but not learning of the life-giving ways that Christ offers as we explore and deepen a relationship with Jesus. Regular attention to the Bible is one of the primary ways you can grow your relationship with Jesus. I cannot stress enough how important it is to read the Bible regularly, daily being the goal. For those of you who've tried that before and didn't have a good experience, I once again recommend the everyday language of the Bible called the message. In his preference, and I, I mentioned the message last week, uh, Pastor Eugene Peterson was the translator of that, and in the preface of the book, he says, The message is a reading Bible. It's not intended to replace the excellent study Bibles that are available. My intent here is simply to get people reading it who don't know that the Bible is readable at all, at least by them, and to get people who long ago lost interest in the Bible to read it again. I leave out verse numbers to encourage unimpeded reading. After all, the Bible had no verses for the first 1,500 years of its existence. That's easy for me to say. There are also great devotional resources out there uh, that can go along with your reading of the Bible. One option is that you have is from right here at Christ Church. We email out to everyone who signs up for it. Every morning we email out a devotion piece. Uh, You can sign up on our website anytime. There's five writers from the church that uh, write on the different days of the week, and then I have Saturday and Sunday. Those five, in no particular order, in case you're interested, are Ben Matherly, Mary Beth Hammett, Kathy Baker, Becky Hall, and David Hall. I choose the scriptures for the week, and I give it to them so that 
all of the devotions for the week pertain to or relate to the message that's coming up on Sunday. So for each day, there's a Bible passage to read. There's a short devotional writing by one of those writers. And then there's a worship option for you for that day. You could do this in five minutes. If your schedule is such that you just need something real short, you could use this for a five-minute devotional. Or you can spend more time with it as your time allows. From my own personal experience, I had been using the Upper Room devotional book for a number of years. It's like six or seven years straight. Last year, I didn't order it. I know some of you use the Upper Room booklet. Uh, it's, a, it's a booklet of devotions. Uh, I think the booklets are for two months at a time. And each devotion is by a different writer each day. It's also one you could do in five minutes if, if that's beneficial to you. The Upper Room book that I'd been using, is the, it's the same writer for the whole week. Well, like I say, I'd been using it for several years, didn't use it last year, and I realized throughout the year how much I missed it. So earlier in January, I ordered the one for this year. And I was catching up on it, uh, just got it this week. And Stephen Bryan is the publisher. And in his foreword this year, he wrote about a friend who told him about her husband returning from a three-day retreat he had been on. She said he'd started getting up every morning and praying. And then she said, frankly, I worry that something may be wrong. Sometimes he even kneels. Well, Stephen went on to write, daily devotion can indeed be risky business when we really desire to know and do God's will with our lives. As he put it, it can create an opening between us and God that changes our direction forever. You see, and I, re- I alluded to this earlier, some, someone can give you a gift, but with a lot of gifts, you have to put forth some effort in order to receive all the benefits of that gift. God gave you the gift of Jesus Christ, but you have to put forth some effort in order to receive all the benefits that Christ offers in your life. Stephen goes on to quote from the first chapter of John's gospel that we heard earlier. The word became flesh. Emphasizing that the scriptures not only came alive most fully and completely in Jesus, but that they can also live in and through us. In fact, he even quotes a church leader of the fourth century, a guy named Athanasius of Alexandria. Go give that name to somebody. He said... Christ became what we are, that we may become what he is. Christ became what we are, humans, so that we may become what he is. For those who are really serious about following Jesus in their lives, you realize at some point that you want to become more like Jesus. You want to let his spirit, his teaching, his way live in and through you. And when you do that, Christ becomes a chaos buster for you. One who, one who you sense as being with you, carrying you, guiding you through anything that happens in your life. But he also becomes much more than a chaos buster. It's not just that. He becomes one who is there in all of your relationships, all of your endeavors, teaching you how to live life to the fullest, and to serve the mission of Jesus. So I encourage you to delve into these words of the Bible that will lead you into a relationship with Jesus, the one who is the Word of God. For those of you who do not like to read, you can get recordings of the Bible and listen to it instead of reading it. And those of you who have children in your home, I encourage you to have a family devotion time every day. My guess is the evening's the best time for that, but you'll, you can decide that. Even if it's just five or ten minutes, I believe it will have lifelong benefits for your children. And if you don't like to read, let them read. Pray and teach them to pray. And by the way, our emphasis in the sermon series next month is on prayer, so be sure to be here as we learn how to pray together. And here's another idea about devotional time with others. 
Those of you who have, who have a job out in the workplace somewhere, um, what if you met with a coworker 15 minutes before your workday started every day or 10 or 15 minutes after your workday ends and, and just had a brief time of sharing a devotional time together? It, it's, a, it's a way just like having a partner with, that you exercise with. Uh, you can hold each other accountable and you can support each other in your spiritual growth. And if you don't have a job out in the workplace somewhere, what if you got together with a neighbor or another family member or a friend? And, and certainly I would want to encourage all of you to consider becoming a part of a small group here at Christ Church, a Sunday school class or another group that meets at another time during the week to study the scriptures, to reflect on the scriptures, to learn from each other and what others have learned from the scriptures. My concern is that for too many people, including Christians, they only hear from the Bible one day a week, maybe for an hour or two, and sometimes not even that. The other six days, this is a six-to-one ratio here. The other six days, they're being influenced. Maybe you are being influenced and taught by a lot of other sources out there in the world. And when the chaos comes, as it does for all of us, you're being lost. You, you, you can have very easily suddenly have a sense of being lost and searching for how to handle it. Too often, people handle it in ways that are damaging to them and to others because they don't have a resource at that point. One of the great benefits of the gift of Jesus Christ is having a guide for all of life, including the chaos. He's like having a powerful flashlight with eternal batteries that never go out. Much better than the uh, Ever Ready Bunny, Energizer Bunny. And one of the best ways to increase your relationship and understanding your experience of this benefit is with engagement in the Scriptures. Read and learn from the Bible by yourself and with others. You'll grow in your experience. You'll grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ, who is the very Word of God. There is no chaos that He can't handle. Amen and amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the guide that you are in our lives. You provide your Holy Spirit every day. We thank you for your word, both the, the written word and the living word that is Jesus. What a gift. What, a, what an opportunity to grow in you, to learn more about you, to learn what it means to be your people, what it means to represent you. Lord, forgive us when we just set aside our relationship with you for times of convenience or times of chaos. Remind us this day Challenge us this day and every day. Help us know of the great benefit that comes when we put forth that effort, give that time to relate to you, to know your word, to learn of you. Teach us every day to be your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. As we approach this time of offering, of giving, of our resources to help others, uh, we invite you, uh, today we're focused on the Bethlehem Center. And let me remind you, first of all, about the uh, attendance registration pad there at the end of the row. Please fill that out. Share with us contact information about yourself. It helps us stay in touch with you. Pass that down to others on the row, and thank you for participating in that. Let us worship God now. One of the ways we help others through our generosity, through our shared ministry, is at the Bethlehem Center. They are doing wonderful work there in meeting the needs of children and of families in that area. So let us worship God now by giving God's tithe, God's offering, being God's people. <laughs>
invited into a relationship, a deepening relationship with Jesus Christ, the one who can guide you in the valley and in the mountaintops and everywhere in between. Certainly you're invited to join Christ Church. You may be looking for a church to unite with in mission and ministry for Christ. We welcome you. You can come here at the end of the service, after the service, anytime. Please know you're welcome and invited. Let's stand and sing.